You've already mentioned chapter number 3, verse 64, regarding that being the key stone or the cornerstone for giving dawah to non-Muslims. How can we use this verse to give dawah to the atheist? As the verse of Sulaiman Imran says, Ta'ala wila kalmatin sawa is bayna baynakum. Come to come in terms as between us and you, which is the first term, Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. How can we use this master key for atheists? If it's a master key, it should be applicable to all the non-Muslims, irrespective whether he believes in a religion, believes in a God or not. How can we dawa with this verse to an atheist? The first thing I'll do when I meet an atheist is I'll congratulate him. You may wonder that why am I congratulating an atheist? The reason is because most of the human beings, they are doing blind belief. They are following their fathers and forefathers blindly. He's a Christian, because father is a Christian. He's a Hindu, because father is a Hindu. Many Muslims are Muslims because father is Muslim. Here, this atheist is thinking. His father may be coming from a religious background, but he says he does not believe in such a God who's weak, who feels hungry, who can be killed. So, he does not believe in God. The reason I congratulate the atheist is because he has said the first part of the Islamic Shahada, Islamic creed, La ilaha, there's no God. The only thing I have to do is illallah, but Allah, which I shall do, inshallah. For the other non-Muslims, I have a double job. First, I have to prove to them the God they're worshipping is wrong, and then I have to prove to them about the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, half my job is done. He already has said there's no God, La ilaha. So he already said the first part of the Islamic creed, Islamic shahada, la ilaha. So half my job is done. The only thing you have to do is the second half, that illallah. And then after that, Muhammad Rasulullah, that Musa is the messenger. And I have given the talk on, is the Quran God's word? And in this lecture, I have showed various ways how you could convince to an atheist about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Time will not permit us to go into the details, but you can prove to him scientifically. I'll just mention a couple of points. But if you ask an atheist and show him an equipment which no one in the world has seen and ask him that who is the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this equipment? After thinking, he will tell you that the creator. Some atheists may say the manufacturer. Some may say the inventor. Some may say the maker. Whatever he says, it will be somewhat similar. Just keep this at the back of your mind. Then I ask the question, to an atheist. The atheists are people who believe in science, they don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I ask the atheist, how did our universe come into existence? So he will tell me that a couple of decades earlier, a few decades earlier, there were a couple of scientists who described how did the universe come into existence and they called it the Big Bang. First there was the primary nebula, then there was the secondary separation, which gave rise to galaxies, which gave rise to stars, sun, and the earth on which we live. When we ask him, when did you come to know this? He will say 30 years back, 40 years back. So I will tell him that what you are talking about, the Big Bang, is already mentioned in the Quran more than 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, which says, Avalam yaral lazina kafuru. Do not the unbelievers see. Anna samawati wal arada. Kaanat ratkan ftakna huma. That the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. This, for a talking about the Big Bang, is already mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned this? Well, it's okay, maybe it's a fluke, no problem, don't argue. Then ask the next question. That what is the shape of the earth in which we live? So he will tell me that it's spherical. When did you come to know about this? He will tell, just yesterday in science, 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back. He will tell the first person who discovered the world was spherical was the person when he sailed around the earth in 1579. The Quran mentions 1400 years ago in Surah Naziyat, chapter number 79, verse number 30. Well, Ard Abad is Alika Dhaha. And thereafter, we've made the earth X shape. The Arabic word Dhaha, one of its meanings expands. The other is an X shape. And we know today that the world is not completely round like a ball. It is geospherical in shape. It is sun from the pole. And the word Dhaha does not refer to a normal egg. It refers to the egg of an ostrich which too is geospherical in shape. Imagine the Quran mentions about the geospherical shape of the earth 1400 years ago. When we ask who could have mentioned this, 
it is so maybe your prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a very intelligent man don't argue with him ask me the next question the light of the moon is it its own light or reflected light so he will tell me that previously we thought the light of the moon was its own light it is recently we have come to know 50 years back 100 years back 200 years back that the light of the moon if not its own light it's a reflected light then we can tell him that quran mentions 400 years ago in surah furqan chapter number 25 verse number 61 that the light of the moon is borrowed light it is described as nur or munir it's a reflection of light who would have mentioned this 400 years ago and so on and so forth you can talk about biology about embryology about genetics about geology about water cycle on and on there are more than a thousand verses of the quran which speak about science and every time you mention a scientific fact you ask him the question who could have mentioned this 400 years ago he'll come back to the original answer the creator the manufacturer the maker the inventor this creator this manufacturer this inventor we call him as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so with the help of science and the glorious quran we can prove to the atheists the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala